Howdy again everyone. So, we'll kick off with story time. One of the most impressive zoom lenses I've ever tested is the Tamron 35-150mm f2-2.8 for Sony E-mount cameras. What a great zoom range, coupled up with a fabulous maximum aperture, not to mention sharp image quality, all in one full frame lens. If I was ordered to shoot someone's wedding and could only use one lens to do it, this would be the one. That's my flattery of that Tamron lens, Sam Yang's flattery of it clearly lies in imitation as they have now produced their very own, very similar model with the same parameters. It's also just for Sony E-mount cameras right now, full frame or APS-C. The older Tamron lens it imitates at nearly $2,000 is very expensive, so at about $1,300 you could save a lot of money with the Sam Yang model. Is it as good though? Judging by some of the sample pictures I got from it, its pictures are certainly quite striking. I'd like to thank Sam Yang's UK distributor for loaning me this lens for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual this is a totally independent review. The lens is a similar size and weight to the Tamron version, being chunky and heavy at over 1.2kg or just under £3 despite being made of plastic mostly. The lens is based on a metal mount with a weather sealing gasket. Look at this cool rear lens cap, by the way, isn't that nicely designed? Then comes a large rubberized zoom ring, which turns smoothly but a little heavily with a subtle bump at the telephoto end. The lens collapses and extends under its own weight, so thankfully that zoom ring has a locking switch to lock it to 35mm if you want. The custom button opens up some interesting shooting options. In custom mode 1, the focus ring works exactly as you'd expect if you set the lens to manual focus. In custom mode 2, when you're set to autofocus, then the focus ring adjusts your aperture. When set to manual focus, the focus ring lets you shoot manual focus in a linear fashion, useful for videographers. In custom mode 3, there's a dolly shot manual focus option for focusing while you're zooming in and out and moving. Interesting stuff. Also, the lens's focus hold buttons have an extra functionality. Hold down that focus hold button for 3 seconds to preset your focus point. Press it once again to return to that focus point. Again, a useful function for certain photographers in some situations. That focus ring is rubberized and turns very smoothly. I found it working quite nice and responsively with the lens's focus motor. When zoomed in, the lens displayed almost no focus breathing. Zoom out though, and a little image warping can be seen when changing focus. The lens's autofocus motor is reasonably quick and silent whether you're shooting in single shot or continuous mode. When it comes to accuracy, I encountered a few missed shots when shooting in the middle of the zoom range, but generally it did hit my subjects well enough and tracked well for eye detection focus. The lens is advertised as being parfocal, unfortunately it is not, as you can see here. I'm not angry Samyang, just disappointed. The lens's front filter size is a large 82mm wide and it comes with a large plastic hood. In common with a similar Tamron lens, this Samyang option is not image stabilized, so you'll really want to use it on a stabilized camera body, ideally. Overall, the lens's build quality is big and heavy, but it works fine. The autofocus motor on a competing Tamron lens is better though, a little faster and more accurate. Ok then, let's hear about image quality. I'll be testing it today on a Sony a7R 3 camera with its 42 megapixel full frame sensor. In camera corrections are turned on for this test. Good news to begin with, at 35mm and f2, image quality is absolutely perfect in the middle of the image. It's pretty fantastic in the corners too, where contrast also continues to be very high. Those corners are a bit dark though, and we're seeing traces of colour fringing on contrasting edges. At f2.8 and f4, we see increasing corner brightness and an edge of extra sharpness also. The lens stays this sharp down to about f16, where softness begins to creep in due to diffraction. Still, a brilliant performance at its widest angle. 
Let's look at the middle of the zoom range now. It's a similar story. At 85mm, the maximum aperture has darkened to f2.8, and sharpness remains virtually perfect in the middle of the zoom range, and the corners, again, look almost as good. F4 is about the same, but f5.6 jumps to looking as razor sharp in the corners as it was in the middle. Again, the lens stays this sharp down to f16, encouraging. Finally, let's zoom in to 150mm. Finally, a weakness here. At f2.8, the lens is just averagely sharp, and contrast isn't so high anymore. Corner image quality is now looking a little rough, as you can see. At f4, there's a tiny improvement in the corners, but in the middle, image quality is now spectacularly sharp. Here's f5.6 in the middle, and the corners now, finally looking much sharper. At f8, they look sharp and bright, and again, they stay this sharp down to f16. So then, overall, while I was hoping for a little more sharpness wide open at 150mm, still, the lens's sharpness is consistently great across the whole image frame, and Samyang should be congratulated for that. How does this lens compare to the older Tamron version? I found the Samyang lens to be just a little sharper in its image corners at 35mm. Both lenses were the same at 85mm, and the Tamron lens was considerably sharper at 150mm and f2.8, so I would say the Tamron is a touch sharper overall, but it swings and roundabouts. Anyway, let's see about distortion and vignetting. Turn off in-camera corrections and, at 35mm, we don't see any distortion, but at f2, we see a lot of vignetting in the corners. Stop down to f2.8 and f4 for those corners to brighten up. Zoom into 70mm and pincushion distortion emerges, and at 150mm that gets slightly worse again, and at f2.8 vignetting is still pretty bad in the corners. Again, stop down to f4 or f5.6 for brighter corners here. The lens can focus down to about 30cm, which, when zoomed into 150mm, gets you lovely and close to your subject. At f2.8, we still see sharpness close up, but there's a lot of ghosting, clouding over your image. However, stop down to f4, and excellent sharpness returns. Let's see how well the lens works against bright light. At 35mm, we're seeing quite a few flaring artefacts, but nothing too problematic. Zoom into 150mm, and they become more serious, as you can see, so you'd definitely benefit from using your lens's hood here. Now, let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh, a really important question for a lens this bright. Good news, absolutely no problems here, whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out. Lovely, soft, out-of-focus backgrounds to be seen all over the place. Finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f2.8, it's fairly strong, as you can see, but stop down to f4, and it quickly goes away. Overall, the Samyang isn't some cheap knockoff lens, it's an excellent zoom optic in its own right in my opinion, and I'm really pleased with its performance. It has managed to squeeze 90% of the quality of a much more expensive Tamron lens into a much cheaper instrument. If I were to shoot a wedding with just one camera lens, I think I'd be forced to go with a Tamron because its autofocus is a little more quick and confident, and because of its sharper image quality at 150mm and f2.8. But the Samyang lens is actually a tiny bit sharper at 35mm, so really it depends on what you want to do, whether you want to save a not inconsiderable amount of money and go with a Samyang, which is still generally excellent. They are both fabulous pieces of kit, and this is certainly one of the best lenses Samyang have ever made, and its price is quite reasonable for what you're getting, so it certainly comes highly recommended. Thanks for watching everyone! Gah, I wonder why Samyang didn't send me a review copy of that lens out much sooner, it performed really well. Anyway, I really want to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters, seriously, you are helping this channel keep trucking on enormously, so check it out in the description below. Patreon supporters get all kinds of exclusive bonus content, as well as early access and special pictures, all kinds of little things for my wonderful Patreon supporters, I do love them, and ciao for now everyone.